Hello, and welcome to our Eduro Learning video series, Coaching Fundamentals. In this series, we'll hear from 12 experienced instructional coaches from around the world on topics like how do you define the role of a coach and what are your best strategies in a coaching conversation. My name is Kim Cofino, and I will be your host throughout this series. I've been really fortunate to be an instructional coach in schools around the world for the last almost 20 years, and I've learned a ton from these conversations, so I am super excited to share them with you. If you like this format, hearing from lots of different perspectives on a single topic, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get all 12 videos in the series. Turn on notifications to find out when we're live on YouTube and to be the first to see the next installment. Have questions about instructional coaching or would you like to see a specific video series related to anything about education and technology? Leave us a comment below and let us know. Want to see even more instructional coaching resources after you've watched this series? Head on over to our website to check out our free resources, more videos, and online courses about teaching and learning and coaching in the digital world. Today's video is an introduction to our awesome panel of instructional coaches from around the world, and they're also going to tell the story of how they got into coaching. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll see that there are so many different pathways to a coaching career, whether you were just in the right place at the right time, or you worked very specifically to get to that position, or maybe you just kind of fell into it. There's lots of different ways that we become coaches. So hopefully this will give you a peek into the background of the coaching careers of all of our panel of expert coaches. Uh, my name's T.S. Bray, Tim Bray. Um, I'm also known by sometimes. And I am the ed tech director at Chungna Dalton School in Korea. Uh, I've been in coaching now, um, gosh, it must be 10 years. Um, different, different types of coaching roles, um, ed tech mostly, uh, but also I was a director of a school for two years and I was an instructional coach on that, in that capacity. So long time. I fell into it. Um, I was at Korea International School, and Rich Berner uh, had decided to go one-to-one -one with Mac computers, and I had came from a, a previous Apple environment, and I was very comfortable with one-to-one -one teaching, and so that was noticed right off the right off the bat. And so then um, they were forming positions for the next school year, and so they were saying, "Well, we had this idea for ed tech specialist, and you would be like helping people in the classroom and maybe helping them design units." and you know, helping them integrate technology. And do you think that'd be great? I said, yeah, sure. And then they said, but the caveat is it's a halftime position. And we also have a halftime dean of students for the middle school. So if anybody's ever had two halftime jobs, you know it's really like a full time and a half. And so um, I was the dean of students and the ed tech specialist in the, in the middle school at Korea International School. Um, that was back in 2008. I'm Maggie Hoss McGray, and um, I'm the Director of Educational Technology at the American School of Bombay. I've been here um, in the school for six years, and four of those I've been into coaching. Um, I got into coaching because four years ago we had our middle school tech integration person leave, and rather than replace him, we thought we'd try a different form of professional development. So we decided what we wanted to do was to try and distribute the um, technology support among more people and at the same time try and personalize professional learning um, through a coaching model. So what happened was um, I went off and trained in cognitive coaching and then when I came back we asked people to apply if they wanted to be tech coaches and we went through a process to recruit tech coaches for the school and all of the tech coaches are um, full-time teachers who do this in addition to their job um, and what it means is that everybody has a tech coach and that tech coach generally is in their department or maybe in their grade level um, sometimes not because obviously we don't have tech coaches in, in middle and high school in every grade or department um, but the reason that we went with the coaching model I think was to actually distribute the leadership of technology and at the same time provide a more um, personal PD experience for each and every one of our teachers and TAs. Sure uh, my name is Dave Caleb I am a digital literacy coach at United World College of Southeast Asia the East Campus in Singapore uh, I have been a coach for four years 
Um, and I've been teacher since, oh gosh, 18 years, I guess, at total. <laughs> I got into coaching because I was always a, a classroom teacher and um, we had some coaches at our school. And so we had digital literacy coaches at that time and one of them was leaving. And so I was always pretty proficient with technology, loved technology and thought that that would be a, a great um, job to do. I liked the opportunity to work with different teams. And so the job, when the job came up, I applied um and that's how i got into it i'm diana b about um as far as coaching i was thinking you know how long have i been coaching i didn't start out wanting to you know like i'm going to be a coach it's evolved over time so uh, really i've been coaching i would say informally and formally for the past 15 years uh, as a teacher in the u.s i started out just by mentoring new teachers and um, giving feedback to other uh, as i gained experience giving feedback to other teachers as well, and then over time, I got more experience and then started getting some training and getting uh, uh, jobs where I was actually formally, you know, as a job, a coach. Uh, I was an instructional coach in a high school in Denver and got a lot of experience and training with that. And then I moved into an EAL position where I was the teacher, but also coaching other EL teachers as well. So it's it's been part of my job, I feel like, for a long time, both formally as a coach and informally just as another teacher helping out other teachers um, to, to grow in their practice and, and just those conversations we have in general as teachers. Um, I'm currently an IT lead teacher at a school in Doha, Qatar. Um, I've also worked in an international school in China as a learning innovation coach. And I will be moving on next um, in the fall to back to China to a different international school as an innovation coach again. OK. My name's Ben Sheridan, and I'm currently a learning innovation coach at National School in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, I first got into about almost eight years ago. Uh, I was working at a school where they did not have such a position, and I was actually teaching kindergarten at the time. And the school kind of um, transitioned. I helped the school transition into Google Apps for education. And since it was new to the school, everybody needed training. And since I was the guy who understood how to do what we needed to do, um, I started coaching teachers at that time. And that's sort of how I got into coaching. Hi, I'm Trisha Friedman. I'm currently a digital literacy coach at UWC, the East Campus. We're located in Singapore. Um, I've been coaching for a few years, but uh, I've been kind of fortunate and privileged to have had many different hats. I've been a cast coordinator. Um, I've been an English teacher. I've taught TOK. Uh, so I, I feel like actually I've been jumping in and out of a number of roles, which um, I think is really helpful for a coach, actually. I've been really lucky in the admin and the leadership teams that I've come across. So um, I've also I've, I've worn a lot of different hats and this is now currently the seventh school that I've worked at. Uh, about four schools back, um, I, I had a, an admin member who was just really encouraging and really kind about the passion that I was showing, I guess, for the way that the world of ed tech was changing and how quickly it was changing. Um, and I think before I was even aware that some schools were having this coach role come up, um, she kind of just encouraged me to mentor in whatever opportunity I, I could find. So uh, yeah, I, I think leadership can really play a big role in, in identifying who those people are to kind of help move the middle. Hey, my name is Marcello Mongardi. I, um... I work in Oman at the, uh, at the international school, the American International School. And uh, I'm a middle school technology coach. And I was a second grade teacher and have over the years migrated into this position. Well, there's, I think there's two, there's a distinction between coaching and being in technology. Uh, I, I was a second grade teacher um, in, and we worked in Africa, my wife and I. And then when we came here, the school was very well resourced and it had lots of technology. And I guess, you know, a light shone down on me. I could see like the opportunity. Um, so I became very interested in it. And then I, a position opened up. I took the middle school tech guy job. And I've now had that for five years. But I think it's, it's, it's a position that's morphing, which happens a lot at schools, I think. And I'm becoming 
people know how to use stuff now and people know how to research tech opportunities. I mean, there's always room for that, but I'm, um, I'm finding myself more like looking at the pedagogy much more and trying to find new ways of um, learning and trying to find new ways of teaching using technology. So that's where the coaching comes in, where you're, you're really not showing them a piece of technology. You're, you're inquiring into their teaching practice with them. So that's just happened or happening. It's still happening, you know, here. So my name is Pana Asavavatana, and I currently work as a pre-K to two technology and design coach at Taipei American School. A stroke of fate, really. Um, the person who had the role before me at our school decided that she was going to retire at the end of an academic year. And so with that timeline in the academic world, as you know, most people have secured their next positions already. And so they looked only internally and um, I decided to go for it and got it. So it, I was very lucky shifting from the kindergarten classroom into this role, but I'm very happy that I did it. <laughs> Hi, my name's Patrick Green. I am the high school education technology coordinator at Singapore American School. I also am the Global Online Academy site director here at Singapore American School. I got into coaching when my job of education technology coordinator started morphing into coaching. So basically I was hired um, for a role in a 900 student uh, school division, middle school, where, um, gosh, this would have been back in 2007 when schools were, well, we were a school that was very much lab based and with 900 students, we had to have enough labs to support um, increasing integration of technology. And so um, the job really was about budgeting um, for 90, a staff of 90 teachers and 900 students um, and kind of program development, which at that time was more lab classroom based um, and over I mean even in that first year but certainly over time the the job I believe morphed into uh, a role of coaching not just kind of program development. Hello I'm Kerry Lee Beasley and currently I'm the Director of Digital Learning at GEMS World Academy in Switzerland. Prior to that I was a digital literacy coach for about eight years at United World College of Southeast Asia. Well, I got into coaching kind of by accident. I was um, originally employed, employed as a technology teacher um, and I took each um, class for two periods a week from like grade two to five and the teachers had a release period at that time. Um, and it was great fun, like I really enjoyed teaching them and we, we did some really amazing things. But what we noticed was that it wasn't really transferring into the classroom when the teachers were in charge because they didn't really know what we were doing. Um, and although we tried collaborative planning and so on, it doesn't, didn't really have the effect if they were sitting, if they weren't in the classroom at the same time. So uh, Katie Day, with a li teacher librarian at the time, and I um, proposed that we do um, a coaching model. And luckily our principal at the time went for it, so that was positive. Um, and since then it sort of never looked back. We um, ended up getting literacy coaches and mathematics coaches and expanding it in that respect. Because once the teachers started becoming involved, then we saw a lot more transfer of ideas. Uh, my name is Clint Hamada, and I'm currently the Pre-K to 12 Educational Technology Coordinator at the International School of Beijing. This is my second year here. My first role as a tech coach was actually called a middle school, high school technology facilitator. Um, and you know we've had conversations about how you know the titles change and evolve over time. Um, but it started as our school went into a one-to-one -one program. Um, and we actually had Jeff Utech come in as a as a consultant into the school and was talking to our entire middle school, high school staff about you know the shift and the change of things that could happen. And one of his recommendations was, you know, you really need somebody on staff who can help support teachers full time um, and make that really an important part of their their job. 
Um, and up to that point, it had been me and a bunch of teachers who were getting together at lunch times and offering kind of free sessions or like, hey, let's figure this out together kind of sessions um, as we were all teaching full time as well, because we you know, really wanted to be successful. We wanted our students to be successful. Um, and so when that position came up and that recommendation came up, I was one of the people who put my hand up and um, I transitioned from being a full time math teacher to being a full time technology facilitator. Um, and that was in 2008, so 10 years ago. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Dowd. I'm a former physics teacher. I taught high school physics and math before moving into the middle school level as a technology coach. So I worked for five years as a technology coach, working with all teachers in our middle school, so all subjects. And I currently lead professional development workshops, and I'm also a mentor for new technology coaches. I, I stumbled into coaching. That's how I got into coaching. It kind of happened by accident. Um, as a physics teacher, I think it was because I was a physics teacher, I used a lot of tech in my classes. I think because I was a physic te physics teacher, but I also just have always liked using tech myself. Um, and so I just integrated a lot of it into what we were already doing in science class. And what happened kind of naturally is um, it started with math teachers math teachers wanted me to help them use my, my physics equipment because it really related to a lot of math topics. So then I started kind of running informal workshops at school for the math teachers, teaching them how to use it. Meanwhile, I discovered this whole world of ed tech. Um, there was a librarian at my school whose role was kind of ed tech before it was called tech coach. Um, and I just thought her job was fascinating because she got to come into all of our classrooms. So that kind of got me on that route of, um, oh, there's this world out there of coaching. And so I went back and because I'm addicted to school, got another master's degree and uh, the rest is history. Now you know a little bit more about all of our coaches and how they came to be in the roles that they're in today. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight about the different ways that you can become a coach if that's what you're interested in doing. Uh, stay tuned for our next installment of our Coaching Fundamental series from Eduro Learning. And if you'd like to see a little bit more like this, please head on over to our website at edurolearning.com to check out more great coaching resources and teaching resources and parenting resources all about living in the digital age and being successful with technology.